All right, sorry, we're going, we're live. So again, we're gonna go over some specific topics. We're gonna go over our slab production, how that's made. We're gonna go over our mosaics, our glass mosaics and our karma. We're gonna go over just the product offerings as a whole as it pertains to your system and your program. Um, I'm gonna give us a little bit more light there in my room, my office here. So uh, without further ado, we're gonna go ahead and get started, watch some videos, stuff like that. Again, since we have people on time constraints, if you do need to get my attention, go like this. Otherwise, we're, uh, we're just gonna plow right through this to make sure we can get as much as possible in there. So I'm gonna share my first screen. And again, this is kind of our agenda of what we're gonna be going over. Um, let's make sure I've got the right document up. So we should be seeing a new hire training program announcement on your screen. Can you guys wave your head yes if you see that? Okay, perfect. So again, uh, this is really our, our, uh, our, our guideline of what we're going to cover is talking about our company as a whole, how we got our start, where we are, uh, projects that we've done that, that you can be proud of and talk about you know, proudly with your customers. Uh, where we are now in terms of a company and what we're evolving to. Then we're going to cover the product industry knowledge, understanding kind of who we are, how we make our products, and then what type of uh, competition we have and what they offer. You know, it's important. Uh, what is engineered stone? So we're going to go over some very general topics and, and hopefully give you as much information as possible so you can understand this industry a little bit better. Um, now, our step-by-step -step sales process, that's where the inside salespeople that are joining can bow out. So if you're in inside sales and you, you know, you've got a, a, a 10 showroom, great. If you want to stay on, great, no problem. Uh, but we're, we're going to go over the specific step-by-step -step things that you do in a sales appointment if you're a design consultant. Now your pre-work, follow-through, and homework. Again, this is really just the end of training, so we're gonna go over, and again, this is a very condensed version of training. So I'm gonna try to kind of give you some pointers on ways that you can be successful as a sales consultant. Um, going over, you know, assigning you with some basic homework of secret shopping and do, you know, measuring out dimension, and getting dimensions right for backsplashes and countertops. Just basically getting you some practice. Um, and, and that's really the step four of today's, um, today's call. So uh, we're going to go ahead and pop in here with some company background. So uh, I like to use our, our pitch book actually to go over the company background, which if you guys aren't aware of what our pitch book looks like, uh, it looks a little something like this, which I assume you guys are seeing now. Can you see it? Wave your head or shake your head yes? Okay. Good. We've got the electronic pitch book, which is really a good way in the beginning for you to tell the story about our company uh, if you're not very familiar with it. Again, if you're in the inside sales world and you're doing showroom or, or home shows, uh, it is still possible uh, that you could use this, but it's less likely you're going to use it every day. But it's good to study just so you kind of understand. So you can see, um, you know, we, we've got our, our headquarters here in Vicenza. Uh, that is for Trend Group. And again, that is in Italy. What you see here in this brick building is Orsoni, which is in Venice. That's another place where we make uh, and produce glass mosaics. And then, of course, what we're not showing in this screen is our factory in Florida, which, again, let me try and see if I can zoom out a little bit to make this a little bit easier for everybody to see. Yes, yeah, so our factory in Florida will go over as well. So we essentially have three main places where our products are made. Uh, um, really four, but the three that we like to talk about. We, we've got um, you know, our headquarters in Vicenza, which again, they do some artistic design work there and it's beautiful, gorgeous, has ton. You'll see a video a little later that shows the inside of that building, which is gorgeous. We, we have Venice where we make our small tea, which again, isn't something you're going to deal with regularly, but nice to romanticize for the story. And then you've got our Sebring factory. That's where the slabs are made. And again, we're gonna cover a video of exactly how they're made and what they're made of and all that. And then we've got our factories in India. This is where a lot of our mosaics come from as well. Of course, you wanna romanticize the, the Italian you know, tradition of uh, how our products are made. You wanna kind of emphasize that it's an Italian uh, you know, design and things like that, because most folks don't really know that India has a pretty rich tradition as well in making mosaics and vibrant colors and things like that. Now, um, Trend Transformations, I'm just going to read the bullet points here, also known as Granite Transformations and a part of the Trend Group, is the largest direct manufacturer of uh, surfaces in the world. 
We've uh, installed more than 7,000 countertops a month, so that's an important point for you. A uh, world-renowned company that has custom-designed surfaces in high-profile places, including the Vatican, the Lens Louvre, the Nokia Theater in New York City, and the Hard Rock Cafe in Cancun. Those are just some we included on the pitch book, but we've got an insane amount of projects that we've done. I guarantee in all of your markets, with the exception of possibly Arkansas, because I'm not 100% sure how much of our stuff we do commercially there. It's never been a part of my territory, but I know in Tennessee, I know in Phoenix, I know in a lot of places we've done some pretty high profile projects. And really, when you talk about those things in your appointments, it, it helps solidify that you're not just some fly-by-night company that's not done any work, you know, and, and is kind of maybe going, going to be here today, gone tomorrow. We've done projects in, uh, you know, LAX and the Phoenix airport. We've done artistic work all over the U.S. Uh, we do a lot of hotels, a lot of restaurants, um, uh, again, a lot of airports, movie theaters, any, anything that is kind of flashy, uh, that fits our style. You can assume that we've probably, we're somewhere, you, you know, probably in your state. So it, it's, these are just some good talking points to give them an idea of what type of work that we've done nationally. Um, the transformations that we do, you know, for your world is primarily going to be kitchens, uh, bathrooms, fireplaces, maybe a floor here and there cabinet refacing. Uh, so again, those are those are some key talking points about, you know, really where we fit in the in the context of what you're there to visit them for. Now, we actually have a number of I'm going to go back here to our new hire training screen. Got like 15 documents open at once and I have to move your screens around. So uh, again, where we're at now, we're actually all over the US, but we also have franchises in Canada. We have franchises in the UK and Australia. So we're a global company. It's something that you should definitely push as uh, a, a proud story. Again, even though we're an independently owned franchise at each location, we're a very large company, the largest home remodeling company in the world. So that, that's really the, the very, very, very basic dumbed down version of it. Again, as a review, we, we make essentially as a company three product lines that you deal with on a daily basis. Um, we make the slabs, which you use for countertops, shower surrounds, fireplaces, and flooring. That's made in Florida, which I'll show you how it's done in a moment. Uh, two, we make glass mosaics that are stamped, which are little square three-quarter by three-quarter or hex or rectangle, which we'll go over in a few minutes. And then we make uh, a thicker hand-cut glass as well, and that's the Karma Collection. So those are our three main product lines that we actually make as a company that you use on a daily basis in your sales calls. We have other partnerships as well with surfaces and you know, certainly our, our cabinet refacing side of the business is a partnership that we work with a few companies on, uh, but we produce those three things. So um, we're going to move right along to our product and industry knowledge. So our where's our factory? We've already discussed it a little bit. Our main factory where you need to you know about this is in Sebring, Florida. Sebring's is kind of, it's in the middle of the state. There's not really a, a ton of landmarks, but if you have a racing fan, that you're, you're dealing with. There is a major racetrack down there that does, I think, a 12 or 24 hour race uh, in Sebring. So that's probably what that area is best known for. But that's where our factory is. And I'm going to go here and start by watching that video first. So let's go to our slabs video. And I'm going to share screen. And if I could get a, a head shake that you guys can see the, the video screen, that would be awesome. So can everybody see that there's a video about to start? Okay. And let me know if it's small or something I need to zoom out or I need to full screen it. Let me know. But I think this goes full screen for you guys. It all begins with carefully mined stones combined together to form slabs of gorgeous granite. I see a head shake. What's going on? Is it too small? There's no picture. There's no picture. Okay, just one sec. I'm going to reload it for you. All right. So since I've got you unmuted, you're going to be my designated person to let me know it's working. So, all right. Can you see a picture at all now? All white. 
all white. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and kill the video completely, and then I'm gonna reload it for you. The technology is beautiful, but sometimes we have to try it a second time. Open Are you out of the Miami office? No, I'm actually in California right now. Okay. All right, so we're gonna try this one more time. Can you see a black screen or a white screen right now? White. Still white. Okay. Well, I'm not sure. Again, I'm going to try one other method here. You're going to see a messy desktop. I'll do, instead of just sharing this, this small screen, I'll try to share my whole screen. So give me one more second. All right. Can you see my whole screen now with tons of tabs open? Yes, about okay. one third of the screen. All right, perfect. So I'm going to go full screen on this in just a second. And when I do, let's confirm first that you guys can see it play. Can you see it play now? Yes. All right, perfect. So I'm going to go ahead and do a full screen and you won't see me. I'm going to pause this from time to time. And when I do, uh, it, it's for a reason. So we're going to go ahead and go to full screen and... See if we can hit play there. There we go. It all begins with carefully mined stones combined together to form slabs of gorgeous granite. Looks good. We can see it still? Using Looks several good. different sizes of Town Mountain, Burnett Pink, and Koblenz Granite, and mixing them together with a special polyester resin, they create Lago Ambra. This combination of stones, Town Mountain, Staley Black, and Red Spar are mixed together to make Crystal Rosa. Rock solid granite slabs are manufactured through a sophisticated automated process. All right, so I want to pause there. I know we just started the video, but I'm going to pause it for a purpose. So you can see the inside of our factory. Uh, again, I'm not going to really call and point out each individual thing and I can't see your screen So you're gonna have to wait till the video is over to ask any questions, but it's only about two minutes long um, Try to take note of the different production uh, line steps if you can just in the back of your mind uh, Just because you will get an engineering type that's going to ask a little bit more specific questions Not important that you're an expert in this area, but it's something that it, I, I think is beneficial to see at the Eastone USA plant in less than a year from breaking ground, Eastone USA began to supply granite slabs to the Granite Transformations franchisees. So there the you're seeing where the raw materials are. Granite begins with natural granite that is delivered by trucks. The granite is stored outside in these bins until it is ready for production. The granite is stored in this holding container for distribution into the plant. The product travels to giant grinding machines via a conveyor system. The next steps of production are carried out through a sophisticated automated process. Based on specific recipes, exact portions of granite, quartzite, and polyester resin go to the mixer. In the first station, the agglomerates disperse onto a large tray. Next, an automated arm trowels a smooth surface on the agglomerate. Each slab of granite then moves into a large kiln on a timed interval. Approximately 30 slabs of granite are in the kiln at one time, and they come out individually and move to the next stage of production. In order to get the proper finish, each slab goes through a polishing process of approximately 52 diamond polishing heads.
Quality control is a major focus in every step of the production. So, um, I'm going to uh, try to change my view here to see... Oh, hold on. Sorry, guys. All right, so wave your hands if you have a question. Otherwise, I'm going to run through how I used to tell my customers... Again, and this is the right way to tell your customers, especially the engineering types, what our product is. Because again, not everybody understands what our product is. You know, they think, oh, well, is this man-made? Is this, uh, you know, what do you guys do exactly? And understanding what our slabs are is key. Again, understanding what an engineered stone is, is key. So an engineered stone is what you just watched the process of making. It's, it's a, a material that, that is crushed up and mixed with a resin or a binding agent. And again, we choose to make our products with glass. So the raw materials you saw there are glass, granite, quartz, quartzite. We use porcelain. We use Aventurina. We crush up our mosaics. There's a ton of different products that we use, but we mix it with this polyester resin. And the reason we do that is we mix with a polyester resin because a polyester resin is flexible. So what that means to you and your customer is by using a flexible resin like that, you're allowing a very thin slab to be very strong and flexible. Because if you use a resin, there are other resins that are used. Okay, so like quartz, quartz uses resins as well, but um, they use a different resin. And again, they're very rigid resins, so they don't have the flexibility and movement that, that will hold it together you're gonna get cracking, fracturing, breaking, chipping, which I'll show you pictures of here in a minute. But uh, again, there's a very big difference in how we make our engineered stone and how quartz and other you know countertop companies make their engineered stones. So it's important to distinguish that we're not just like every other quartz. We're a you know a quartz on steroids. If you're gonna be insistent on using the quartz countertop as a benchmark of what we are or what an engineered stone is, it's important that you distinguish our difference from the rest of the engineered stones. Okay, so our resins that are used and our sealers that are used are a very high premium sealer. It gives us higher heat resistance than a traditional quartz countertops, uh, countertop I should say, and it gives us more break strength because again of that flexibility factor. And by using a slab that's a quarter of an inch thick, what should be important to your customer as well is that we're a lightweight product. We're not a heavy product. So if you're talking about a countertop, you know, in your 40, 50 square feet, our product is only 2.38, I think, or 2.87 pounds per square foot. So it's a very lightweight product as opposed to a quartz slab or some other engineered stone that's a very condensed, heavy, heavy slab. You know, that's, that's an issue, you know, having it way down on the cabinets, at the seams, on the floor joists, all those things are important to kind of dictate and know. Um, Mr. Mallory <laughs> says, uh, do you share, a okay, so we, we, we've got some other things, Mike, that we'll go over a little bit later. Yeah, but we, we go over some of that. Sorry, I was reading the chat, guys. So, um, any questions about, you, you know, what an engineered stone is before we kind of get into the more detail about the product itself? Anyone? Wave a hand. We got a question over here. All right, go ahead. It's Tracy. Um, what's the percentage of natural stone to the polyester? That's a very good question. So we have uh, really, I'm not sure if you noticed in the video or not, but they have a recipe that they use. So I always used to compare our products to making a, a batch of cookies. So, you know, your resin content is really going to be 5 to 10% of the blend, depending on which color we're talking about. But we've got uh, we've got a little bit here, a little bit there. So some of our our um, like I'm trying to think of a color that's active in your your lineup. I'm not sure if Mystic Brown is Mystic Brown still a color that's active or no. 
Okay. So, yeah, if it isn't, there was a color that we sold a lot of, Grigio Wintermute, forever ago. And it was renamed a few times and tweaked and changed. But that one was really easy to tell because it had two similar colors where they were using the same raw materials, but you could tell there was more resin being used because it was more transparent and easier to see the depth of the product. So, again, that shouldn't really be... Um, your customers probably aren't going to ask, but it is good to know for that engineering type that, again, you use about 95% granite and, you know, resin, I'm sorry, granite, quartz, glass, porcelain, depends on which one we're talking about. And then a 5% blend of resin to 7%. It can go as high as 10, but it's not common. Usually it's that lower percentage. Good question. Any other questions about the slab product itself, raw materials, anything like that? I'm going to show you a few examples, but... Uh, let's let's shoot with any questions you have first. Anyone else? All right, we're gonna actually show some pictures and images of uh, some colors, and I'll give you some examples of our current color lineup. Sorry, I'm looking down here. I want to put it back on. What's that now? It's back on mute. Mute me. Oh, mute you. <laughs> yeah, that's that's good. Got to get you muted. All right, let's see if you guys probably, my face probably looks ridiculous because you guys are, I'm intently looking at my <laughs> my screen. All right, so you should see a photos um, screen now. So can you guys confirm that you're seeing the photos screen? No? Okay, so you're seeing it now? Yeah, okay. So um, the photo screen, I'm going to move you guys over to the left. So really, I just want to show you not only some of our colors, our swatches here. I, I use this because it's easy for us to uh, show a few things. Um, you know, actually, we'll start with the competition. So I really want to show you guys the reason why it's important that you distinguish the difference between our products. I do want to see you guys a little bit. So this is a folder, and again, this is a, a shared folder that I offer to everybody. If you have an iPad, an iPhone, or a Mac, again, you may have heard this on calls before, but this is a, a folder that I send out uh, to you that you can subscribe to, and it'll automatically download these photos. And I think of all the different albums, this is one of the most powerful ones to use if your customer is confused about the differences between our products and others that are out there. I, in this folder, I've shown, you know, really the differences in our strengths and our weaknesses, but we really just have a couple I'll discuss in a moment. Most of the time, you're just highlighting our strengths comparative to the other products that are out there. So here you can see a slab of granite. A granite is, uh, again, a nice product. It's beautiful, and it's, again, a, a nice piece of art. But at the end of the day, it's not really a great countertop. You've got some uh, some issues that, that again arise such as this one where you don't have a whole lot of flexibility. So if you hit it in a vein or a void, uh, it's not got a lot of internal structure to it, uh, the, the, the slab of granite. So that's what makes our product superior as a countertop. Again, although this is pretty to look at, its lack of internal structure is going to break. If you hit it in a certain spot, it's possible that you break that slab of granite. And we've got numerous pictures to illustrate that, again, a picture is worth a thousand words. That is, again, a saying for a reason. We don't have to sit there and tell them for 20 minutes that, hey, trust us. I know your granite guy says that this stuff won't break, but there's a reason they won't warranty the product, and this is why. So you can just show them the picture, and then that will no longer be a discussion. Now, in recent years, we really run into more competition with quartz. So quartz, really, I want to distinguish the difference between their engineered stone, which is quartz, and our engineered stone, which we also use quartz. So that can be a little confusing. So quartz is kind of a catch-all term for Sile Stone, Cambria, Caesar Stone, LG, you know, any of these companies that produce this engineered stone slab countertop that's, you know, a thicker slab. Uh, they use a resin like we use a resin, but again, they use something completely different. And I'm marking all over my page here. So let me uh, get rid of that real quick. Clear all drawings and stop all right so uh, one of the things that you can really highlight as you're trying to talk to your customer about the differences between us and a traditional slab of quartz 
is that we don't have the same issues with the UV ray sensitivity. So part of Quartz's warranty is that they, they won't cover anything with UV ray, and this is why. So you see that there's two different tones. What you're looking at here is uh, an appliance garage or a, a thing that basically conceals your mixers and stuff like that. And then you can see here that there's a very clear line where it's been closed forever. And this was actually provided by the Granite Transformations in Miami. So this was his home uh, before he moved, I guess. So you can notice here that there's a very distinct line. So that's one difference between our engineered stone and the engineered stone that's used by most quartz manufacturers is that we don't have the same sensitivity to UV rays. Now, when you get a quartz countertop, you're also going to have a lot of these guys here. So you can see this is a zoom in. This is a little chip or pit uh, in an edge. So very distinguishable difference between our products. We lifetime warranty against cracks and breaks and chips. And again, if it does chip, it's an easy repair. Uh, a, a quartz countertop traditionally is not a beautiful repair. Even if they try to do it, it's going to look like this. You know, it's going to look pretty bad. So the most common problem you're going to have with the quartz is that it'll chip out on the edges. It'll have that UV ray issue. Um, and again, it also has a possibility of being burned because it's a very uh, heat. It's not as heat resistant as our product is. So here's an example of a quartz countertop that's been scorched. And again, here's another one where it's been scorched. So. Again, while they may look like our product, and this is where your customer is going to struggle and you need to give them clarity, if they're out there looking at the Silestone White Star, which they have one that looks just like our White Star, you can show them this picture exactly and say, hey, I know that it looks the same, but it's very different. This product is very different than our product because of the resins we use and how we make it. So you can show them all of these photos and again, illustrate to them the reason why our product is still superior even to a normal quartz countertop, a Silestone, stone, a Cambria, a Caesar stone, and illustrate why they won't warranty for heat or uh, UV ray or anything like that. Now, if you're going against a marble, which we have a lot of marble look uh, countertops now, which we did not have years ago, really there's no competition. One, the marble is going to be more expensive than our product. But also the marble is a very soft stone and it etches very easily with acidic things. So you can see that this marble is etched pretty bad. And again, that's one of the reasons why they would go with our marble look as opposed to a traditional marble. So you can see that there's uh, some definite differences there. Now the granite, again, I'm going to cover it just because it may still, you may still run into issues where people are wanting granite over you or they've just got something, a cheap quote, usually that's going to be a Chinese granite. You also got the poricity that you could talk to about, you know, being the difference between us and a traditional granite. So normal slabs of granite, even though they have that 10 or 15 year sealer, you're still going to have issues with it if it's not um, addressed, like especially around sinks, you see this big water spot here. That big water spot is, uh, again, going to happen with almost any, any slab over time. Uh, and you can see how gross it gets in between where the sink and the, the slab actually starts. So you're not going to have this issue with a quartz countertop, but your marbles and your granites, you're going to have a pretty distinct um, difference there. And again, should you ever go up against a Corian, which again is, is possible, but again, not, not common nowadays, um, that's got the same heat sensitivity issues that a quartz does because uh, it's essentially a high-end plastic. And then you've got, again, the ability to really score and cut the surface pretty easily as well. So they have to be cautious of what they put on um, there and how they're dragging things across it because it can scratch the countertop uh, top up pretty good. So, again, I've covered a lot of different things on our competition. So I'm going to hit the main talking points for each one just so you guys can write a note and review if you need it. So your marbles... A marble, our strength is that we are not soft. They are soft. They will etch. We will not etch. They will crack and break because they don't have internal structure. We do have internal structure and we're flexible because our resin you know, allows us some flexibility which allows things to drop on it and not break the product. Um, the quartz countertops. Our strengths against counts, uh, quartz countertops are that we don't have the same heat sensitivity 
that you would have with the quartz. You don't have, again, the, the chipping on the edges as much. The weight were much lighter weight than a traditional quartz countertops. And of course, you've got the other obvious things, ease of installation, things like that. And our warranty is far superior to their warranty because they won't cover UV ray, whereas ours, we, we don't have to worry with that as much. Now, a traditional slab of granite, again, you're dealing with something that's not a, a very stable product. It's really designed for its beauty. I mean, not design. It's it's beautiful, but it's not a great countertop if you get right down to it. It's porous. Again, even when it's sealed, you can't completely seal it. Um, you, you've got a very fragile piece of rock. If you hit it in the right spot, it will fracture and crack in a major way along those voids. And again, it's a heavy product as well. So I'm going to open up uh, real quick before I move on to the next topic and video. And I want you guys to let me know if there's any, wave your hands if you've got any questions about anything so far. How are we doing in Arkansas right there? You doing good? All right. Yes. You picking all this up? Yes. All right. There's a test later. So you better, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but hopefully you guys can pick up uh, at least enough to, to get started. Uh, okay. So I'm going to show you... Uh, a couple of videos that also um, I think are very impactful and helpful for you to at least recall and talk about with your customers. Um, one of them is a little cheesy. We didn't actually do it, but it is amazing. Uh, it's, it's basically a, a rep that's going through and doing some crazy stuff to our products. And again, this video is available if you join one of these folders, but I'm going to go ahead and show it to you. And I'm going to leave you uh, unmuted there, Arkansas, so you can actually keep me informed as to whether this is showing or not. So can you see the video right now? Yes. Okay, I'm sorry, I yes. got a question real quick in Buford. Go ahead. Yeah, quick question. One thing Glenn had mentioned to me, which I found to be an important aspect, is the antimicrobial action of our product Yeah. compared to the others. Because when you're dealing with older people that are on a lot of medication, have immune issues, it seems like they open their eyes about the safety of our products, especially dealing with food and anything else on this product. And you didn't mention that. So yeah, that's NS, what I'm So we're NSF 51. Really, um, I used to hit that extremely hard. And Glenn, like me, is kind of an old school guy. We've been around the company for a very long time. And that was a huge selling point against a marble or a granite. Uh, now with today, quartz having more, um, more of a place in the market, they kind of have similar benefits as well. Definitely a good thing to bring up, especially if your customer's considering a marble or a granite or us. But if they're considering a quartz, it's not really, the, it's not um, a selling point over quartz because they have similar properties. They're, they're antimicrobial as well. They're, I believe, NSF 51 safe as well. I'm, I don't quote me on that. I could be wrong, but they, they're also non-porous products. So it's not something that you're going to have to deal with. Usually the issue with the uh, germs and bacteria forming and stuff like that are with your marbles and with your granites. Um, that's where you're going to have the, the superior talking point for our products. Does that make sense? But I'm glad you brought it up because, Thank again, it, it is important to, to talk about. All right, so I'm going to start to play this in Arkansas. Can you confirm that you can see the video going? Hi, my name is... Did you see a hand move? Okay, good. Yeah. All right, we're going to keep going. It's Mike. I've been a home builder and renovator for over 25 years. It's a nail. This is a nail that came out of my tire. cost me 300 bucks. This morning... I'm testing a piece of Trend Group product sold by Granite Transformations. This can be used in kitchens, baths, on floors. In the interest of full disclosure, I have to say that I am a sales consultant. But this test has nothing to do with the company. I'm doing this on my own time. This is not a sanctioned or authorized or endorsed by anybody. I don't smoke, but I still go into a lot of homes. 
with cigarette burns on them. installed, repaired just about every product you could possibly put in your home. This is just some soap and water. It'd be real easy for me to come into your home and tell you this product is scratch resistant, stain resistant, heat resistant. Please don't try this at home. This is, again, not sanctioned by anybody at the company or anywhere else for that matter. Like I say, I take it as a privilege and an honor to go into your home and show you our products. easy for me to tell you. Now I don't see any scratches. Any. Scratch resistant, heat resistant, stain resistant. So I wanted to find a way to actually show you how much I believe in the product, especially with the lifetime warranty against defects, manufacturer defects. The product holds up really well. Thank you. So um, what do we think of that video, Arkansas? Do you think that's a good way to illustrate how strong our product is? That's really impressive. <laughs> Yeah, so, I mean, that's really designed, uh, again, I I did use, I found this extremely late. Uh, again, this guy, I'm not even sure if he still works for us. I hope he does because he's very good at showcasing how awesome our products are. Uh, but, again, um, that video I found randomly and I tried to use it as much as possible, especially when I was training people. You can fast forward through it if you do get access to this video through this shared folder thing. Um, again, it's an awesome tool to use. We also have one with a bowling ball where you drop, they dropped a bowling ball on the product. Um, so again, really it, just to showcase our differences between there, especially with the competition out there with courts now, it's important that the client or the, the prospect understands that we are not just any other engineered stone. Uh, we are a far superior engineered stone and then you have to be able to explain that in the right way. And again, that being that you can see you can beat it with a hammer. Our stuff's flexible enough where it can flex and kick back and not break. Our stuff is uh, a lot more heat resistant, which is why you can set it on fire. Our stuff is stain resistant to a granite, which is why you can spray paint and put a marker on it. And then, you, you know, you saw the nail test where it's not going to scratch or score like a soft marble would. So really, this video kind of gives it all. Um, if you don't want to use it, the other pictures are still good to use. But it doesn't really show our strengths like this video does. So I feel like this is a really, really strong video to show. And again, uh, all you need to do if you uh, have an Apple product is send me an email saying add me to the list. And I'll send you a ton of invites where you can have all these pictures. And then you can also have this video here. So I'm going to stop share this. Uh, do we have any questions about um, uh, anything related to the first portion of our, our learning about what we make, which is the slabs, before I move on to the glass mosaics? Good? Everyone's good? All right, so we're going to go ahead and move on to the next video. Now let's cross our fingers that it's not a white screen, because then I'll have to do the same crazy thing where we did a uh, full screen of my... my uh, my screen. So I'm going to have Arkansas confirm that you can see a black screen right now. Is it black or white? It's white now. Bummer. 
All right, so this isn't gonna work. I'm gonna have to go through and do the same thing I did last time, which is go full screen. Not a big deal, just give me a second to set up. And open with QuickTime Player. All right, sorry guys. Okay, so I'm gonna do a full screen real quick. You're gonna see your, can you guys see my screen now with all the windows? All right, perfect. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started. Now this is uh, one that is a little bit longer. So I may keep it a little bit smaller like this. Actually, let me see if I can just, yeah, I think I'm gonna do this. Cause that way it'll give me controls. All right, here we go. Vicenza, Villa alle Scalette. From the 18th century headquarters, which look out over classic Palladian creations, trend today expresses all of its potential, faces new challenges, and the possibilities offered by a daring industrial philosophy. To expand the great tradition of glass mosaics to new production horizons. The long history of mosaics moves forward into the future with the inventions created by trend. All right, so I wanna pause here for just a second just so you understand kind of why I'm showing this video. So we're primarily using these mosaics again for your backsplashes, uh, your feature walls maybe, uh, your fireplaces possibly, but usually a backsplash if you're gonna do an everyday scenario. Now this specific collection that you're watching is uh, what we classify as a stamped mosaic or sta uh, stamped glass tile. So that involves it going into an oven and being mixed up and then poured out and then it runs down an assembly line where they've got a big, big pin, as you saw, that rolls over it and creates the shape and stamps it in a more perfect way so it's, it's going to be consistent. Um, and that's really the name of the game with this collection is consistency. So this is where a three quarter by three quarter tile comes from, our three eighth by three eighth tile comes from, which is a little small chiclet looking thing. And then we've got a hex tile that you would use and also a rectangular, which is a three quarter inch by one and a half inch tile. So uh, again, I'm gonna keep playing this one more time. And I want, I'm gonna take, I'm gonna give you some notes. So you see there, it's coming out of the oven. It's running through and being stamped, as you can see there. This is very different from our Karma collection, which is hand cut and hand, more of a handmade process. But there's still some handmade qualities that go into this, which I'm gonna pause if it shows it again. Production at 100%. Integrated technological systems. Organization and logistics. It is with these tools that Trend is able to blend creativity with industrialization. It is how Trend spreads made in Italy quality the world over. How it shapes them. All right, so you see what they're doing there? They're running this Aventurina into the glass or enamel into the glass. So I'm gonna pause here for just one second so you can see exactly what it is that you're looking at. So let me go to my preview screen. I think I may, I'm gonna close this one. Close this one. Goodness, got 50,000 tabs open. All right, so I'm just gonna go here because it's faster. So, um, All right, everyone see this uh, beauty is all around? Okay, so as we go down this collection, what you're witnessing with them moving the mosaic, or moving the mosaic around like that, 
is these swirls. So you see the swirls in this tile? If you look close, can everyone see that? So you're gonna notice there's a copper swirl and there's a white swirl in this collection. And the same goes with hex and uh, again, the rectangular collection. That's what you're witnessing them doing right now. They're running through and running enamel through it, which will be the white veining or this aventurina, which is the copper veining that you see in our tile. So fun fact about those, those copper veinings, the aventurina is if you take your, your phone flashlight and if you're in a customer's house, and you hit that flashlight button and show it on one of those tiles that has a Venturina, it's gonna sparkle like a piece of jewelry, which is a very uh, big effect for clients, for some clients, I should say. If you show that to them and show them, you could try, possibly sell some under cabinet lighting. You could also help close the sale and give them a vision on the, the tile itself. So when you see those, um, it, now you kind of have a better understanding of why some have veins and some don't. So your hex collection, you can see has the same veining through there. It's the same thing. It's just stamped in a different shape. That's really all. That's the only difference. All right, everyone cool with that? Yeah. And I'm gonna minimize this, see if I can get back to that video. Here we go. ...material with constant proactive ability. Creating innovation, anticipating trends, reinterpreting classical materials using the impulses it gets from the market to reinvent the market itself. Being more. <sighs> Federico. So I don't want to spend a ton of time on this just because you guys aren't going to do a ton of it, but I still want to show a little bit of it. So part of what you do, um, I should say most of what you're going to use with this product line is going to be backsplashes, showers, fireplace surrounds, stuff like that. But uh, it, it should be noted that we do a lot more with this product. We do a lot of swimming pools. So you guys out there in Phoenix, Arizona, I know that you're just working on a pool right now. And again, those are nice opportunities. If they come your way, uh, take advantage of it. Talk to me, talk to your trend rep, uh, talk to whoever you need to to walk you through the process. But we do a lot of artistic work with this product line, and we also do a lot of pool work with this line. So this is the artistic. A freedom of interpretation that accompanies clients in their search for true personalization towards the 361st degree. So um, you guys now have a little better understanding about our uh, glass lines for the stamped collection. So again, uh, some things that you can do with those lines, you saw as well, very, uh, very nice commercial product as well as a residential product. So if you've got a shower surround or shower wall, feature wall, let's say they wanna do a portrait of their dog, we can do that. Again, we, we've got the ability to do just about anything. Now, again, your goal as a sales rep is to close a sale on the first call. So 
I'm not saying introduce this because again, it is a time consuming process, uh, process. It's not something that you can close on the spot. But it, again, recognize opportunity, focus on the project you're there for, but see opportunities as well. If that person happens to be a business owner and they want to do something for a feature wall at their reception area at their office place, I mean, you, you want to take advantage of those opportunities. And again, um, those videos are kind of helpful aids. If you want them, we can always give them to you. So it's about 9.53. Usually we try to take a little bit of a break um, on, uh, on the hour if possible. So we're a few minutes early. Uh, we probably have enough time to do the other video, which is karma. So I'm going to try to plow through that and then we can have a clean break at 10 o'clock and then come back. Is that okay with everybody? All right. Awesome. So I'm going to go ahead and do a screen share again, which I know is not going to do what I want. So just one second. I'm going to run through and we're going to watch this last video. So this is our Karma line. Now this is actually the line that is more of a handmade and hand cut product. And this is uh, really this is the way I explain our Karma collection to people. So if you see Metropolis, Subway, Liberty, our new immense collection, all of these are made from karma. So it's important to remember that our karma products start in a big sheet of glass that's 18 by 36. So 18 inches by 36. And again, they take a different pattern and basically create these different collections. So I'm actually going to do a screen share of a different variety for just a second. Uh, sorry, I got to move you guys. All right, so um, let's look together at this collection. You guys can probably see that you're in the way, can't you? <laughs> because you're looking at my whole screen. Uh, it's weird. All right, so we're gonna get you down to our Karma collection. So these are your base colors of Karma, all right? So everything that we make in the Karma collection comes from this glass, which I cannot seem to get to scroll up, unfortunately. But we have quite a few that you can see here. Oh, there we go. So this is our, our base color line. So all of these are big sheets of, of 18 by 36 uh, inch pieces of glass. And then we cut down from there to make our different collections. So our Liberty collection, that's the name of a cut. So we're taking a specific pattern and this Liberty pattern is then, you know, combined with a few different color combinations and we name it something different. So Liberty White, Liberty Pearl, Liberty Opal, Liberty Gray. Those are just the name of the cut mixed with the colorway that we've chosen. The most common for the system is probably Liberty Buxy, which you see kind of dead center there. That's a very popular one. Uh, Liberty Diamond, that's a popular one. Liberty Opal, that's a, that's a popular one. Um, so again, all just variations of Karma. If you look down at our Metropolis collection, and again, I don't recommend that you use, this, this marketing piece that you're seeing right now is one that we have for the whole globe. So it's not 100% of things that we stock in the US that are part of your program. So even though you're seeing some crazy blue colors, don't necessarily offer that to your customer. Make sure it's in your program first. Now, this Metropolis Pearl Diamond, again, you can notice same glass. It's just cut into a different shape. So we're talking about really a different um, cut style or, or you know a different pattern. That's really the distinguishing difference between Liberty and Metropolis. You see there's not as many options in the Metropolis. Um, as there is in Liberty. Some nice installation photos of Opal here. And last but not least, you've got your Subway. Your Subway is a three by six. You also have the, uh, the ability to do it in a four by 10 for some options, but they're nice, nice install images. So that three by six is a very, very nice collection. Here's some, uh, again, some more pictures of three by six. Now the immense, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on cause that's a new rollout for you guys. And I don't know what's on the website right now and what's not. So those are the core, uh, collections right there. 
Now, we're gonna go ahead and watch the video of how this is made, and we got about two minutes, so I'm gonna skip through some of it. Every morning, at number 1045, in the Sistieri di Canareggio, a new workday begins, just like it did May 5th, 1888. Each morning, the miracle of light begins anew, along with the miracle of color. Do you already see a difference, Arkansas, in how we make this glass as opposed to the other glass? Yes. So it's like kind of on the glass blower, you know what I mean? If you've ever seen anyone blow glass, a little different setup. For four generations, the Orsoni workshop in Venice has closely held on to their precious trade secrets, recipes that have been handed down from father to son which become glass pastes in the workshop's 19th century furnace. There is an unparalleled wisdom that is enclosed within these walls. This is the location of the oldest and only laboratory in the world, capable of manufacturing authentic Venetian mosaic glass tiles, mosaic with gold leaf that is able to reach that peak brightness and rarefication of Byzantine times and Murano Renaissance enamels, unsurpassed for their intensity. Anyone recognize that? We just talked about That's Liberty. Unsurpassed for their That's Liberty, Liberty Red. So you notice how she was scoring, snapping, and cutting? Very different than a, a stamped machine-made mosaic. So you're gonna have a lot of uneven surfaces because they're making it like taffy and they're hand scoring and cutting down the tile itself. So it's a distinguishable difference between the two collections intensity and their range of colors that are still today featured in the color library. Orsoni, one of Italy's little places that contribute to the greatness of the world. It is a renewal and perpetuation of those fragments of color and light that through the centuries continue to cloak the Basilica of San Marco in Venice, the Cathedral of Monreal in Sicily, the Basilica of San Vitale and the monuments of early Christianity in Ravenna. Orsoni, a unique heritage of excellence in Italian craftsmanship and a valuable organization that is a part of the most dynamic international mosaic network, Trend Group a priceless legacy held by an industrial group projected toward a global market. Not only for large restoration factories, but also for the most innovative challenges presented by architecture and contemporary sacred art. Culture. Technique. Memory. To continue to tell those universal stories of faith, Today, Orsoni golds and enamels shine in the great temples of Christianity, from St. Peter's Basilica in the Vatican, to the Basilica de Nuestra Senora de Aparecida in Brazil, from Westminster Cathedral in London, and the Washington Basilica, to the Sagrada Familia in Barcelona a rare ability to imagine and create from manufacturing materials for large restoration projects. So it's just going to go over a bunch of churches and things that we've done you know, around the world. So again, uh, you get the gist of the differences between the two collections. Again, handmade, machine made. That's the difference in it. And when you sell this to a prospect, you need to make sure they understand that one is more of an artisan glass almost, you know, it's handmade, hand cut. It's not going to be perfect. It's got imperfections in it because it's made by a human and you've seen it now being made. Whereas the stamp collection is more machine made and so it's going to have more of the perfection that some are looking for and the symmetry that some are looking for. Um, both are gorgeous options. It just, it, it needs to cater and suit to the client. 
So it is 10.03 right now. So why don't we go ahead and take our first break. Uh, if anybody has any questions or anything that they want to add before we move on, um, feel free to, to let me know, raise your hand or something. But everyone else can go ahead and run out and do what they need to do. Why don't we reconvene? Uh, we'll take about 10, 10 minutes or so, 12 minutes. Let's go 10.15. We'll aim to be back here. So 10.15, I'm going to go ahead and kill the video and stop screen share, and we'll see you guys back here at 10.15. Okay.